The CW Twin Cities presents See What's Now, your entertainment news source. Hey everybody, John Foss, CW Twin Cities. I'm talking with Craig Lawrence Rice. We are talking about the Minneapolis St. Paul International Film Festival. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. I so think it's great. Tell us a little bit about the festival. Um, the festival this year is a 37th year. Um, mm -hmm. This festival has been going on for a while. It's one of the older festivals in America, and I'm really happy to be involved in it. Um, the film, film festival that we have right now is going to be probably almost 200 films from all over the world, shorts and long form films, documentaries and, and fiction pieces. It's I, I'm really excited about it this year. And, and we have events going on, parties, which is a lot of people think that's kind of why we show films so people can have parties but um, that's why I'm here yeah, <laughs> right and then we have panels that are basically there to sort of I, I think to enlighten people about filmmaking mm -hmm. to educate to a certain extent and to get people more engaged in the process um, I believe that cinema is an art form mm -hmm. and there's also a literacy to film watching and film going and film understanding that I think that we try to help to encourage people to get to um, we also now have this year as our second year of really doing uh, what we call the next wave, which is a, a group of young people from uh, Minnesota Art Institute, uh, select films by other young filmmakers in the same age group to show in the festival. So they kind of run their own little mini festival inside of our festival. So you're going to see young people's films by judged by young people, selected by young people. Um, so it's that's always I love to see that because they have a different kind of concern and kind of interest than if you're once you become a, sort of an adult adult, um, then we would select for them to watch and see. And so it's kind of uh, really interesting. Um, so proud of that aspect of it. We have Femme Fatales, which is a national organization of, of women who do feature length films, um, are going to be here for the panel. And we have several of their films in their festival right now. Um, and then I run for primarily the, it's called the Minnesota Made section of the film festival, which is films, features of short films by Minnesota filmmakers. Um, and we have a really strong group of probably about 15 films, 16 films that are going to be shown during the festival this year. So Cool. Good, yeah. So that was going to be one, one of my questions later uh -huh. in the interview, but I'll ask mm -hmm. it now. Sure. So is, is there quite a few locally made films, and what is the state of the Minnesota film industry right now? Um, there's quite a few um, really quality Minnesota made films that are could compete on a national level. What we do now with the and have for several years now is all the Minnesota made films are judged based on the quality of every film from all over the world. Since the Minnesota, uh, this, since the film festival is an international, independent international cinema, all the films are judged in the same criteria. So the Minnesota film makers don't get a special pass because they're from here. They have to fit in the context of what everybody else is doing in the world. So we have really strong films here. Um, I think there's a lot of films made in in Minnesota. Um, I think the issues that sometimes ha they have is that we do documentaries really, really well, and I don't know if that has something to do with the the the, the style and the concern that Minnesota people have. Um, but I would say that probably of the 16, 12 of them are documentaries, feature-length documentaries, and they're really strong and really powerful. And and I'm. I think we as Minnesota should be proud of that. I think when we think about films, we always think of sort of fictional based films. Mm -hmm. um, there's not as many of those, but but there are a few of those here. So Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have very extensive producing, directing, film, music video, live <laughs> entertainment <laughs> right, background. Right. You have you, you've going. been nominated <laughs> for four Emmy Awards and an, and you've won an NAACP Image Award. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is your role? in this film festival? Um, my role in the film festival, I came in here almost six years ago now, was to sort of help to uh, build up and enhance this Minnesota Made um, mm -hmm. aspect of the festival, and which I, I think we've done. I also created the Next Wave uh, part of the festival, and I w also work as a programmer during the re regular year for the Capri Theater, which now sh is open, and we show uh, film the first Thursday of every month. So really programming and helping in, 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 in uh, the festival programming, but the year-round programming. Also, I'm now on the board, um, so help to shape and sustain kind of the vision that Susan Smahowski, our executive director, has for the, the film festival and the film society itself. So after you've done all of this, uh, you've had all of this experience, you started Minnesota, had all of this mm -hmm. experience, mm -hmm. how do you end up back with 
with the film festival? Um, it was uh, Susan Smahowski I had known for a while. Um, when she took over this, uh, the, the reins for this organization, she asked me if I wanted to, to do something here. And I did sort of a little section uh, with her a year before I started, and then she asked me, did I want to stay? So I knew her when I was at, uh, I was executive director of the Minnesota Film and TV Board for four years, and she worked with us there for a while uh, as a development director. And so we had sort of had a long-term relationship as, as relates to what she knew, what I could do, and what I wanted to mm -hmm. do. And I think I needed to <clears throat> do this at this time in my life because I sort of came out of sort of the, the making side of filmmaking, and I realized th the barrier of entry to filmmaking is no longer there. Um, you've got an iPhone, you can do that, you get mm -hmm. a computer, you can shoot, cut. I'm right editing there. this interview. Yeah, right, exactly, <laughs> while we're sitting here, right. That's how fast it is. Mm -hmm. um, so the barrier of making films is not there, which is what controlled it before. Now what it is, it's not about making the films, it's getting the film seen and getting it into the audience. It's, it's like you've got to look at it now as there's a cereal aisle, you know, and there's all these cereals, and how do you cut through all the clutter that's on the shelves? And I think that I wanted to learn more about how uh, distribution, exhibition, and festivals really, really worked. You know, before I had been in festivals, but I never paid any attention to it. You know, mm -hmm. just like, okay, they're showing your film, that's great, you know. But now I realize this is, can really help you move your film forward and move your career forward if you look at it as a career. Um, and I wanted to learn more how it worked, so. You kind of talked about this at the beginning, but what is the thing that makes this film festival unique? You t talked about a theme of this film festival. Tell us about yeah. that. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, the film for the Film Society is in, in uh, you know, international independent cinema is our theme. Mm -hmm. This festival right now has one, uh, the theme for this festival is called Chasms and Bridges, and it really is you know, what separates people, what brings people together. You know, we're, looking, we're trying to find films that sort of support that idea, and so we're trying to, you know, it's not some deep political process, I'm not saying that, but there are things that are actually in our world now, which is a really tough, dangerous, unfortunate world we're living in right now. So what separates us and what can bring us together? Um, what, how do we build these, these bridges? And, and that's kind of what we look for films in this festival. So there's a number of thing, films we have that are about everything from racism and gender issues, transgenders in the military. Um, you know, the, some, there was one called Dark Money, which is really kind of about, unfortunately, money in America and how it affects everybody um, and how that's sort of manipulated. There's the one on, on the art world that's just about how the art world is manipulated. Uh, it's all based on money, based on what people tell you it's worth and not necessarily what it really is worth. Um, we have, obviously, films here uh, that are made from Minnesota that are really about uh, gender issues. Um, again, we have a tendency in Minnesota to be much more liberal in some parts of the country, but that's a film, films we have those kinds of films in the festival. So it's, that's kind of what we look to try to do. But there are films from all over the world, from every nation in, 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 in the world that we try to look for those films. And we consciously say, what do we have from Africa? What do we have from China? What do we have, you know, the Latino film fest? Um, Latino films, what do we have from Scandinavian countries? So it's not just like we take everything, we actually go in and say, what can we do to represent? Since this state is one of the few states in America that has so, you know, bicultural, and we try to address the cultures that are here in the state and whatever are, we do. Are there any specific films in particular, in particular that you're looking forward to? Um, yes. Um, some of them I've already seen, but I'm looking forward to seeing them again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, uh, the Rider, which is about Native American rodeo uh, family in, in North Dakota. I love that film. Um, that's a whole other world I never knew existed. And so that, you know, it's kind of like taking a trip. Um, there is a film called Dead Pigs, which is a Chinese film that I just thought was great. Um, I'm Not a Witch, which is an African film about a culture of sort of women who are witches and how they sort of control them. Um, they don't necessarily get rid of them, they control them because um, I do believe in that process. Um, I'm interested in seeing people's response to, uh, uh, um, I, I, Melanie Gilbert has a film called Silicon Soul, which is about people who fall in love with uh, dolls, um, life-size dolls. Um, and at first it's kind of off-putting, but you realize that people just need companionship and they need love and they crave it. And so if it's with something that's in inanimate, they need it and you, you lose your judgment. So it was the most transitional film I've ever seen in my life, where I went from one thing and saying, these people are crazy to, oh my God, this is what loneliness can do to you, you know? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that there's Q&As and, and uh, interaction yeah. like that. Yeah. 
Will there be directors, actors, uh, et cetera, yeah. here? Yeah, there, we have a number of filmmakers and producers coming and actors coming to the festival. And we do, after every screening, that there are people represented in the, um, people that represent the films. We do a Q&A at the end of it. Um, so that happens for every screening. Um, and then when, we, when there are um, panels, like we'll do what I call the duets, which is two filmmakers with films in the festival from different cultures will come together and talk about their filmmaking experience and their ideas and philosophies about films. We do a couple of those. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have legal panels talking <coughs> about, again, going to how you, you know, what to look for and how to make films and or make them more s successful. Um, we're doing a what we call the Minnesota Cinematic Awards, which is a filmmaker who's from here. Um, last year we did Sarah Piersbury. This year we're doing Peter Markle who did Personals, which was one of the first uh, sort of independent films, not just in this country actually, but he shot it here. He's been in LA for 30 some years and he's coming back here with his latest kind of independent film. He decided to go back old school and do mm -hmm. something like he did his first movie with no budget and just doing it. So, cool. it's, yeah. How, how do people that have made a film or that are going to make an, a film, aspiring filmmakers, how do they get their film submitted, number one, and number two, what do you look for? What does your what does your staff look for when accepting films? What what makes a good film and a bad film? Um, we start taking submissions um, in August, um, so we'll start looking for films. So filmmakers have, then they should start submitting uh, to us um, those films in August, and we go all the way through till like December, um, sele sec uh, uh, selecting and uh, gathering films and selecting them. Um, uh, Jesse Bishop, who's our head programmer, and the rest of the programming staff get together and sort of set a criteria for what we're trying to do uh, in the next festival. Um, what I personally look for, for myself is I look for films that are actually about something. They're not always traditional storytelling, traditional narrative structure. I look for films that are about something. So they, sometimes they can be experimental, sometimes they can be sort of edgy, sometimes they can break all the norms. I, I look for film, again, as an art form, but it has to be, I think, education, enlightening, and, and, and entertaining at the same time. And so I kind of look for those things in all the films. So it's not about what I like so much, it's about what I think the audience will appreciate and, and absorb and enjoy. What's going to get the film shut off in the first 30 seconds? <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> so. I, it. Literally, I know. I, I mean, I, I jokingly tell people I can usually tell the film mm -hmm. is going by the opening image. You yeah. know, um, I do give it more than that to watch it just to see maybe they they stumbled at the, because sometimes we take rough cuts, mm -hmm. so you got to give them a break and yeah. go through the film to see if they're maybe it's just the when they f finish it, the film is going to be better. But mm -hmm. you know, when you look at a rough cut, it's hard sometimes to say this is what it is. It's what what will get the, the audience to pay, you know, $15 to come and see this movie, you know. Note to self, though, make that first 30 seconds. Oh, a lot of, I'm lot, telling you, hey, hey, first image, <laughs> make that first image strong, mm -hmm. that, you know, say, oh, okay, yep, yeah, yep. exactly, exactly, right. that's what it is. It's like a hit record. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the festival takes place from April April 12th through the 28th. 23rd. How do people get tickets? And um, to come online, online to, to our website. Um, we also are going to have, one, one thing that we're doing this year that's the first time is really we're going to, we created an app. You mm -hmm. can go to the Apple Store to get the app on there, and it'll give you a whole rundown and what films are playing and everything else like that so it's great it's, yeah all right craig lawrence rice thanks for being with thanks, us man. i appreciate you in twin cities make sure you check out the minneapolis st paul international film festival right here at the st anthony main theater